I'm back. Rudrance for the Matrix and Road Show. Well, we are all gathered here today to celebrate the demise, finally, of Star Wars The Last Jedi. We can finally put a, a wrap around that because Top Gun Maverick has passed it domestically at the box office. And it is about to overtake it probably by the end of this video. It's going to overtake the overall box office worldwide of Star Wars The Last Jedi. The Star Wars movie that, of course, successfully ruined the franchise. And then Disney has done all it, all it could to continue throwing dirt over what used to be a very successful franchise that was created by George Lucas. So, we're going to look at the box office. Star Wars The Last Jedi, by the way, it did $1.333 billion at the box office, okay? That's overall worldwide. Uh, so, we're going to get to this. And, um, man, Top Gun has blown it out of the water domestically at this point. Uh, Super Pets nabs $41 million worldwide. Minions crossed $700 million, And Top Gun passes... 1.3 billion with a B. Warner Brothers DC League of Super Pets started wagging its tail overseas this weekend, barking up 18.4 million in 63 markets. Its global debut was 41.4 million. Outside the pooches, this is, was a notable, another notable hangover weekend for studios while we await. Sony's Bullet Train. That is um, the Brad Pitt movie that is on its way. That's not to take anything away from Universal. Minions, The Rise of Gru, which is rolling along and led overalls, overall overseas for the studios this session with 25.4 million in 79 markets. The international take is now 390 million for 710 Point four million. The UK continues to lead play at forty million, followed by Mexico. Disney's and Marvel's Thor Love and Thunder has only got a global take of six hundred and sixty two million. I mean, I don't know if anybody's considering that a success, but that doesn't sound like a lot. For a Marvel movie that's supposed to be this big with one of the major Avengers characters in it, Christian Bale's in that movie as the bad guy. Um, man, that seems pretty bad, to be honest with you. It really does. Meanwhile, Top Gun Maverick saw another crazy hold of night just just 19% fall from last week at 64 markets, and it took in another 13.8 million. It's now re uh, reached. 671 million that's internationally and for a total of 1 billion 321 million point one worldwide wow wow people love movies that are not woke speaking of movies that are not woke and I'm gonna be honest with you I did finally see Jurassic World Dominion and all I gotta say is, Colin Trevorrow should have re should have directed all three Star Wars movies. Uh, it brought back the old cast. And look, I'm not here to tell you the story was just an absolute knockout. It wasn't. But at the end of the day, we're talking about an action movie where dinosaurs have come back to life and they're chasing people around. It's not going to be Goodfellas. It's not going to be The Godfather, okay? Um, but it was really entertaining. It was very fun. The family loved it, and it had very little wokeness in it. And because of that, it's faring well at the box office. Uh, Jurassic World Dominion ended its weekend with an added 13.8 in 86 markets, including Japan. Dominion has re reached 573.1 million internationally, 942.6 million globally. It's currently running 26% behind Jurassic World and 12% below Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Um, it wasn't as good as Jurassic World, I don't think. Uh, I actually really like Jurassic World. Uh, Fallen Kingdom, it was much better than, I think. And the one thing I will point out about that movie 
is it was um, extremely respectful of the original characters. Now, look, it had some plot armor, as you can expect, and it had some really convenient scripting in order to get all those characters in the same location from the new part of the franchise and the old. But they were very respectful of all the old characters. All the old characters lived. Spoiler alert. And um, I enjoyed it. It was fun. You know, I can at least say that. They didn't do anything to damage the Jurassic Park franchise. Whereas Star Wars, of course, they pissed all over it. Uh, so you get the point there. Yeah, Colin Trevorrow, I would have given him a damn sight more of a shot at Star Wars than J.J. Um, Abrams and Ryan Johnson. So, Top Gun, $1.321 billion. Just, just a few thousand now. Behind The Last Jedi, like I said, by the time I get done wrapping what's going to be not even a 10-minute video, it will have passed Star Wars The Last Jedi, the movie that was fractured the fan base. It fractured Star Wars. It, it, it rushed in Disney's woke identity politics-driven era. I mean, look, it's in the MCU, it's in everything, but let's be real. Ryan Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy, that was the movie that really flooded it in for Disney, and now look where they're at. And Thor, by the way, is not performing that well. It's really not. And that movie looks like a mess. A total mess. Unbelievable. Well, Top Gun... Ex look, extremely patriotic, love of country, no identity politics, still got a 99% on the Rotten Tomatoes audience score, which is the, the part I care about. I want to see what the actual audience thinks, not what the critics think. Even the critics have got it at a 96%. What does that tell you? Stay away from the identity politics, stay away from the wokeness, Show a little patriotism, and audiences will respond, and it has become the biggest hit of the year and one of the biggest films of all time. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Tell me what you think, Matrix and Roadshow fans. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Black and White Network supporters, make sure you check out the Black and White Network merchandise store. Link in the description. Use promo code USA First, all one word. USA First, all one word. 25% off now. Thank you.